Hello my fellow vapers, this is Dimitri, also known as The Vaping Greek. Uh, pardon our studio, makeshift studio. We are attending the TMA eVapor Science Collaboration Conference in Virginia. But I'm joined here by Dr. Fasalinos, giving you an update on the Indiegogo support for the temperature study. Yeah, so Dimitri, I have to thank you personally, first of all, uh, for all this campaign and all this uh, uh, work that you did, together, of course, with uh, Phil Busardo. And of course, I want to thank all the contributors, first of all, the vapors themselves, who, although they are consumers, they are very health conscious and they are eager to, to, to uh, learn more things about vaping. And of course, the, the companies which have contributed to this uh, crowdfunding campaign. So, as you all know, the crowdfunding campaign was a big success. Uh, and I believe that Dimitri's effort and uh, this uh, ice bucket type challenge played a big <laughs> role on that. Uh, it is a big success. Uh, we have started the experiments already. We already have some fascinating results. Uh, I want to clarify one thing. All this money are not about one protocol alone. It's going to be a series of studies, both on a clinical level and, of course, on a laboratory level, assessing the temperatures of evaporation with, at different conditions, both, both in terms of power delivery and path durations, and in terms of wicking materials, wicking setup, and so on. Uh, it's going, and it is already a fascinating field of research, and I'm sure it's going to be even more fascinating as we progress. Uh, we are planning to start our um, first chemical analysis of aerosol in uh, relation to the temperature of evaporation uh, in January. Uh, so we are already progressing with measurement of, of the temperature at various conditions. Uh, the success of the crowdfunding uh, campaign will play a major role in finalizing all the experiments, all the work that we that we want to do. Although uh, we are seeing through our uh, preliminary experiments that the, it's a vast area of research, the temperatures of evaporation, and, and we are certainly uh, eager to expand this research. We are going to find some additional uh, funding sources because I think it's crucial not only for the regulators, mostly for the vapors to understand how they use the devices and what's the impact. You know, the impact of the thermal load as a total uh, load uh, on uh, the uh, temperature of evaporation, subsequently on the production of thermal decomposition products, plays a crucial role. Uh, and I'm really excited that I started this um, uh, um, research uh, uh, effort and I uh, want to thank all my team which is not only composed of physicians but also from electrical engineers and people who are um, involved in these uh, measurements um, we are confident that we are going to publish more than three possibly I would say five papers coming out of this study and I think that our information will be valuable for the vaping uh, consumer um, uh, area and for the uh, for for the vapors community, uh, because uh, it will give them a guidance on how they should vape in terms of safety and whether they want to choose a safer way of uh, vaping, combined of course with the satisfaction uh, and pleasure. Uh, I also want to thank everybody other that participated. I mean, doing the challenge itself is useless unless you're going to have people that are going to step up, and certainly. Uh, the industry itself with their monetary donations uh, did step up as well as a lot of vapors I was uh, surprised to see hundreds and hundreds of vapors that donated even five dollars to this project to get it done I know we had to wait for last minute, which is kind of unfortunate But it also shows how tight this community is if they want to come together uh, for, for the benefit of the product and what we're putting out there to society as well, too And interestingly enough today doctor while we we're attending this conference the the issue of temperature was brought up by a company that were saying, you know, oh, they're vaporizing at these high levels, and, and you addressed them correctly. You said, how do you know? Have you done a study to tell us exactly what is happening when it's temperature? And, they, and then they kind of quieted it down because you do bring up the good point that you cannot accuse a product if you have not done the proper study that goes with it. Exactly. It's not only a matter of power levels. You know, we are very account, uh, acquainted in checking, in me measuring on, or in reporting uh, the wattage levels. I vape at 10 watts, at 20 and 30 and 40. But you must take into account the equipment that you use to vape at such power levels. So we are seeing that even a change in the setup of the wicking material and the wicking and coil um, uh, head 
on the same atomizer and using the same liquid is having an effect on the temperatures of evaporation. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it's a very complex issue related not only on the liquid, not only on the power level, not only on puff duration, which is also a, a very big determinant of the of the temperature of evaporation, but also on the equipment itself. And these are the things that we want to address because we want to stop all this um, uh, campaign of, you know, production of aldehydes at very, very high levels without even uh, addressing whether these are realistic um, uh, conditions of vaping, whether you have dry puff conditions and so on. Uh, We are going to characterize the dry puff conditions themselves. We are going to uh, check at which temperatures the dry puff conditions are uh, produced And we're going to check whether the vapors can consistently understand uh, the the dry puff phenomenon and at what temperature levels. And on on a subsequent uh, point, we are going to test what's the amount of carbonyls of aldehydes coming out at dry puff conditions compared to normal conditions. And I think this will resolve a lot of issues and a lot of misunderstandings in the media concerning aldehyde release and formaldehyde levels. And one thing that I've noticed coming to these conferences and some of these events, doctor, and you uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but every time that I hear from a public uh, regulatory authority, uh, whether that's you know some kind of foundation or, or institute that's doing work for the FDA, uh, I keep hearing the same thing. The burden is on the industry to prove the product that they're putting out there on the market. It is not up to the FDA to make the, the, those, those testings and, and prove exactly what the product is doing. It's up to us, the industry. And unfortunately, we have done a poor job in the past, and it's time now to change that. Exactly. This is the same thing is happening with every consumer product. You have to understand that this is something that I've been saying for the past two years. It's the responsibility of the industry to prove that the product is safe. It's not the consumer's responsibility. It's not going to be the regulator's responsibility. The responsibility of the regulators is just to assess the amount of data that you will provide, but it's the companies, it's the industry who needs to provide the data. And it's the industry who needs to invest on research and provide the data. And and on a more personal note, um, talking on our side of it, industry, because within the vaping community, I think we do have two uh, industries that are kind of separating themselves. But for our side of the industry, that's the refillable product, the product as we know it, what's worked for us, the flavorings, everything that we've used up to now is under threat, not only from the regulators, but within the industry itself, too. There's people out there that are trying to shut us down. So it's vital right now. Uh, of course, the temperature study is is a, is a, is a great first step uh, on on providing the data that's going to be needed at, at least at some point as we're moving ahead with uh, with regulation. Uh, lastly, uh, and, and I don't want to make this video too long. This is just kind of introduction. We're going to touch on more this weekend. Uh, uh, we're going to do a more extensive video on this. But lastly, what I want to what I want to mention is that. Once again, without the help of the community, without the help of those vendors that did step up and the vapors that step up, this would not have been possible. Uh, personally, I put a lot of time and effort in it, and, and it's rewarding to see the community come together as it did uh, to make this happen for, for Dr. F and his team. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to thank uh, everyone, especially the vapors, but also the vendors. It's very important that we have an open public uh, crowdfunding campaign. Uh, so no one can use that as an argument of, uh, uh, you know, developing and producing a study which is paid by the industry or whatever. I think the crowdfunding uh, campaigns are a very, very uh, nice opportunity to produce independent research because you, you publicly, it's, it's publicly um, uh, available and everyone can see that it's the researchers who... Uh, uh, develop the idea and and provide the idea and uh, show the idea and they are just asking for funding for their own investigator driven research. Uh, so this is what defines the independence of the research. It's not a paid uh, job that uh, a company asked uh, or uh, a company ordered. It is our ideas uh, that we go out publicly and uh, transparently, and we ask for funding. And I think that this uh, opportunity of using crowdfunding tools uh, is a very nice opportunity to show that the, the work that we do and the research that we do is completely independent.
Yes, absolutely. And I heard it here all the time, uh, the Lori Lard study that came out. Obviously, it was criticized because it was funded by Big Tobacco. Here we have the opportunity to show that thousands of people contributed to this uh, for the better of the industry. All right. We won't keep this. We kept this long to, to uh, uh, already. So thank you once again from uh, from me and Phil, of course, who were part of the fund uh, um, uh, raising campaign. And, of course, uh, Dr. Farsalinos and his team. Uh, more updates as we get them along. Keep an eye out for next weekend. We're going to have uh, a bigger video explaining a little bit more detail of what's going on. Thanks to everyone who contributed and who helped uh, spread the news about this campaign.